Hey everybody. First day of spring, nice and windy here. Trees are starting to put little buds out on them. I am, I am in what is going to be my shop. Uh, if, you know, some of my videos, I have a little tan kind of garage with a red roof. And that's where all my tools and where I've been doing all of my equipment, you know, working on everything. And that has been my shop, but none of my equipment fits in it. Uh, the deuce fits in it, and I kind of store it in there, but... Uh, we, we acquired this little piece of land. It was some old family land, and we finally got it bought back. And the guy who owned it liked airplanes. And so he built this, it's a hangar is what it is, this whole whole door moves out. It's got cylinders on it and that whole door, it pivots right up there and it moves out. But uh, kind of been, I was stored my equipment in here this winter, part of it. And, uh, you know, I, I buy used equipment, so it's. And I buy what I can afford, so you got to do quite a bit of maintenance on it. And we have a big shop that we've done everything in, but the door's only like 14 feet wide and 10 foot tall. And so my swather won't fit in it. My big 7800 barely fits in it. I don't think this baler would open up in it. And so we kind of kind of decided that I'm just going to use this building as my shop and so I, what I'm gonna do and today since I've got a chance uh, they had an auction here before they sold the land and they just kind of left a lot of junk in here they didn't didn't completely clean it out but um yeah I mean there's just random stuffed animals and it's got it's a dirt floor. I would I'm gonna want to pour a concrete floor in it, but you know I left some tin in here. There's a little the the house burned down. The guy had a trailer house and it burned down, and that his son built him a little. It's a little kind of a cabin. It's a lot nicer on the inside than it looks, but so there's some stuff here and. I need to get cleaned out. I mean, I've left battery acid. Um, but, you know, it's there's there's power strips everywhere. This was, I guess this is his idea of wiring it. He ran a conduit and then just put power strips on everything. They're all over this building. Um, but, you know, the place wasn't cleaned up, so there's, from there... All the way down this fence line, there's just a giant pile of junk. And so I figured I'd just take the junk out of here and just go ahead and throw it on that stuff and burn it. But uh, in my decision to make this my shop, I I have one of these air compressors. Got it from Napa. Uh, a little two-horse motor on it. But uh, I had one, and I really liked it. And we bought another one for my father and put it in his shop. And since I uh, decided I was going to use this as my shop, I went ahead and bought another one and I put it down here. I poured me, since I don't have, I think it'd be fine on dirt, but I went ahead and poured me a little concrete slab. And I mean, this thing's got nine pieces of rebar in it. I mean, I really kind of stacked it in there, but... That way it doesn't walk off because this shop is not at my house. It's about, it's not quite a mile down the road, but you know, it's where I couldn't see if somebody was over here and I don't really want my air compressor to walk off and my tools. So I'm gonna move some tools down here. This is, I even bought me a little, it's a $300 pressure washer because it seems like we can't keep pressure washers. They're always wearing out. But I have that because none of my equipment is clean right now. I mean, you can just see all the hay that's been left in there. 
and it's just filthy. I need to get this thing cleaned up and fixed before before we start baling hay again. Uh, I got a leaf blower for my birthday. My brother gave that to me, so that way I can keep them clean. But yeah, they are. That's what the pressure washer's for. You know, get these things cleaned out and with the leaf blower, keep them clean and the pressure washer and because it's better that way. But no, this is, this kind of, I guess this is going to be my shop. My equipment can fit in here and I'm going to do my mechanicing in here. Um, just because we're in New Mexico and it's windy all the time. There's never, I think a day, we probably have more days with rain than we do days without wind. And so that's kind of, I think that's what I'm going to do. I've got some OSB they left over here. That way I can put under the equipment when I'm working on it. But really that's kind of what I'm doing. Just, it's, you know, the guy built it himself. It's okay, I guess. It's, I would have preferred a steel structure building, but, you know, it, I didn't build it and for, it'll work for now. And I got my air compressor over here. It's actually pretty light. I put it here because this seems to be the, this is a breaker box going in here. It looks like a mess. Um, all, all the wiring in here just looks like a mess, honestly. Um, I think, I, th I think it's pretty bad myself, but, you know, if it doesn't burn the thing to the ground, we'll be alright. Um, I have to, I have to plumb this thing. And, I actually, what I did, I, I usually just run the little 3-8 air hose, but I went with half air hose. This time, I, the one thing about these Napa compressors, you know, they come, they just, they don't come with anything in them. You gotta plumb them yourself. But the compressor itself was $715, or $750. They were $600 when that, with the first one I bought, but they're not now. Um, and the reason why I went with the first one is our little, we had portable air compressors, little gas powered ones. And if you've priced a portable gas powered air compressor, like one of these, the dang things are $1,400. You know, a good one's 1400 bucks. And that's, you know, and actually 14 to over 2000, they're, they're ridiculous. And this one's got a big air tank on it. and. Well, since I'm going to be doing a lot of mechanicing, I went ahead and went with a big heavy-duty half-inch hose. That way I could run, you know, three-quarter inch or one-inch impacts. Because that's, it's what I don't have. I don't have one. And it gets to be a pain because it's hard. It's almost impossible to take tires off my own equipment, like my big feed trucks and tractors. You know, you can sit out there with a breaker bar and kill yourself. But, you know, you kind of got... Sometimes you can barely budge them, so you got to call them to come out and swap the tires for you. And that's... I would like it where I can at least pull the tires off myself, not feel so helpless. But I'll, uh... That's, that's kind of... I went with a big hose. And what I'm going to do for now, since... I'm just running little impacts. I, I've just got it reduced down to three eighths, but uh, that way I can always just take this thing off real quick if I get a bigger impact and put it on here or get another hose or do something. I've got plenty of options, that's for sure. All right, I don't have my GoPro with me. I just have my phone today, so I'm this. I'm gonna, these videos are going to be pretty choppy. Um, what I did is I put Rector Seal on the tank part and on my hose. 
I use Teflon tape. I have never had a problem with just using Rector Seal. Um, it, I mean, it works works pretty good. It's always does a good job. Where, uh, it just reminded me of a story. My when my dad was young, he started working for a. There's a rancher here who was also a contractor, and he, so my dad went to work for him, and back, you know, contractors then, you know, you could actually do a lot more than just uh, framing construction or finish work, you could do plumbing as well, and the guy, instead of calling it rector seal, he always called it rectum seal. Which, so now every time I use it, that gets stuck in my head. You know, or someone will, someone will need it. You know, and it really just kind of blows away. It blows people away. You're like, well, I got you some rectum seal. Oh, what? But, um, I didn't mention this. Uh, what I'm going to do down here is we have some big rock hammers we used in construction. And we found some very, very good epoxies. And my concrete's still a little soft. It's It's been super cold, so it hasn't set up. But we're just going to mark those holes and drill down into it and epoxy the bolts. The bolts straight down into the concrete. And so you're going to have to cut the heads off the bolts to get this thing out. Which, that's kind of the whole... That's kind of the whole point. I'm not too worried about moving this thing. As long as it works. But... I'll get that other piece put on here and I'm just gonna patch a lot of these videos together and uh, so maybe it won't maybe it'll work out pretty good we're gonna see if it held um, uh, I I handed up my hose is connected or my cables connected on that side and so I gotta should have put this thing somewhere else but I'm gonna go straight into that one we'll turn it on running got oil in the compressor these things I mean they run really well I'm pretty I'm happy with them we'll see how well our hose holds up drag it over here but it's not really vibrating I mean It's when somebody makes the offhand comment about Napa air compressors. <laughs> I shouldn't have bought a cheap one, but I think it'll work. Um, the, you know, the other thing I'm doing is I'm going to put some locks on my doors, uh, which you know, a lock just keeps honest people honest. If you wanted to get one, just got to take a hammer and hit it three times, and the thing will fall off. I don't like the little screws and since we do a lot of big metal buildings uh, we have these long tech screws and it's what we we drill a, through our sheets of steel into the actual red iron and so they will go through some steel and they will hold it on there and that's that's what I like to use and that's what we we just have bags of them left over from all the buildings so it looks like somebody's done it Quite a few times, somebody's put some hasp on here. I thought I was gonna have to do one on this back door, but I'd forgotten this thing has a has a set of locks on the inside. But I, you know, I don't think a person could get to this one. No, this one's pretty pretty good. Did that one keep it? I may put a padlock on the on the inside just just in case that may be what I do um, just put the padlock on the inside but who knows 
Well, what's going on here? Put a fuse box in and doesn't have anything wired to the bottom side of it. Oh, the guy, the guy who owned this was my dad's cousin, but there was no, we, we didn't have anything to do with him and he didn't have anything to do with us and now here's, here's something. Look at this beam. It goes up, starts curving over. Good lord, that, that's kind of ridiculous. I wonder if they didn't pull that thing over. I, I would have rather had a steel shop that we built ourselves. This thing does kind of worry me, but I have insurance on my equipment. I guess if this thing falls down, all of those, good lord, all of those, look at that. I think it's terrible. Um, wow. See how our air compressor's doing. Hey, it's, it's filling. Um, while I'm doing this, I know Cow Camp's got a deer baler, and, um, I don't, I can't remember the name off the head. I think it's like, uh, d -Beck or it's the Family Livestock channel. They've got a deer baler. I think they have a deer baler. I could be wrong. I know there's a few of my subscribers that have them um, that are floating around. And I've never run a net wrap machine before. And I messed myself up by doing this, but I'm getting a bad... I need to get some light and I'll come back and do this, but I'm getting a bad looping problem with my net. It's it's going under that, you know, it goes under the cutter, but it's, it's looping really bad and it's catching on the belts. And so eventually it'll, the belts will catch it. But I mean, I have, I thought my brake was tight enough to stop that, but I don't know and the the deer day the ugh, the John Deere dealer that's closest to me you know they're 50 miles away they actually don't work on balers you know all they deal with is corn guys guys plant corn uh, so the next closest dealer is in Amarillo or actually in Canyon so they're 135 miles away and so it's kind of hard to get some information on the baler besides just what I've read in the book and you know I think I've fixed what I can fix myself but uh, I'll get a flashlight and maybe I can turn the flashlight on my phone we'll see is my net wrap is just it's not breaking enough I think it's not breaking enough and it's allowing that instead of that wrap to come on come on down you know here's your silver roller and then there's like the knife is right here that cuts it that wrap is going down but then this roller is not stopping soon enough so it, it throws a little loop in here and then it goes back down but it leaves this loop and you know your baler belts are are running there and what's happening is it's catching this loop and then it's pulling pulling it out past that knife and when you go to wrap your wrap your bale then this knife isn't cutting you know it, it, it senses it doesn't cut the twine and it starts screaming at you in the cab and that's that I think that's the problem and I, I've seen a video where I mean, this thing's supposed to be just, I mean, tight where it doesn't move, but, you know, it's, I'm not having that problem. It's not moving on me. Uh, I don't know. Somebody with, with these Baylor experience a little bit more than me, I would definitely appreciate some input because I have done everything I can think of. And it is just giving me grief. And that's... I got got my hasp on. I'm gonna have to go and get some sheet steel screws that don't have this big head on it, as my padlock's too big. 
air compressor just finished running. Um, 120 pounds, no leaks, don't hear any leaks. Get my, oh, I messed up. I grabbed the wrong end. I need to grab the big end. Put it on this giant line of, I've got to take, I've got to bring my 7800 over here. I've got to seal out one of the hubs again. That seems to be my common struggle right now. And uh, so this will be nice for taking the tire off. This last time I did it with just a, a ratchet and that, that gets kind of old. So that's good. That's a plus. It's always a plus. Go ahead and just turn this thing off in case it does have a leak. Then just sit there and run. So yeah, if you guys, uh, it, you know, if you've had any experience with these things and you kind of know what I'm fighting, I would really appreciate a call or not a call. You know, comments. Hell, if you want to call me, I'm sure we arrange that. But uh. Some comments on it because that's that is the biggest problem I have with this baler right now. You know, I bought it used, had eighteen thousand bales on it when I bought it. It was a cus a guy's custom hay baler, and so you know it's it's seen a lot of hard bales. I've had two bearings already go out on this machine. I've got got this the uh, mounts for a fire extinguisher because. I've gotten to where I have to carry it with me. Um, I had that bearing went out, and then this bearing went out, and if you can see that it started pulling this thing down, and it actually started eating up the eating out the plate on the baler. Um, but yeah, that's so so far that's my biggest.